Uh, we are going to start with length and how do we measure uh, length in science and what are the metric units associated with that. Uh, this is also the first time that you're going to be using the WISC format, so make sure you go back and refer to the WISC handout uh, so that you know exactly how you should be reporting information in your notebook. So before we start, um, there is a short little video that I would like to show you. Measurement. A long time ago, people used to measure things with their own body parts, like feet. But just whose foot was one foot? Later, it was the king who declared that his foot, the royal foot, would be the foot that all feet would be fitted against. It was the standardization of the foot, and it was quite a feat. Humans are about this big, so we've always wanted a unit of measurement about ooh, this long. And we want it to be the same for everyone. We want it to be a standard. That's why it's hard to use something like a foot, because not everybody has the same size feet. So what we did is we looked at the Earth, and we divided the distance from the North Pole to the equator in tens, 10 million times. And we got this. It's a meter. We use tens because humans have 10 fingers. Now you can keep going. You can divide a meter by 10, and 10 again, and you get centimeters. There are 100 centimeters in a meter, just like there are 100 cents in a dollar. You can divide it by a thousand, and you get millimeters by a million, and you get micrometers. It's easy. With a meter, you can measure just about anything. This microphone is about 32 centimeters long. What? It's the metric system. It's easy. What? I said it's easy. What? So before we start, let's see how you can determine which is longer. So here in the United States, we often use, or we mostly use, the English system, with the exception of science class. So what do you think? What's longer, a mile or a kilometer? If you guess mile, you're right. So it actually takes 1.6 kilometers to equal one mile. So one mile is longer than a single kilometer. What about a yard? Think about a yardstick. Which one's larger, a yard or a meter? In this case, it's actually a meter. Uh, one yard uh, is approximately 0.9444 meters. What about inches? Inches we use, we use our standard 12-inch rulers, so most of us pretty much know what an inch is. How does that compare to a centimeter? an inch is bigger. So one inch is actually equal to about two and a half centimeters uh, on the metric ruler. So a lot of the rulers that we use in class, one side will have the English units and the other side is going to have the metric units. It's really important that in this class we are always, always, always going to be measuring using the metric units. The basic unit of length in the metric system is the meter and the meter is represented by a lowercase letter m. So anytime you see that unit after a number, we know that we're talking about meters. Remember that in math, in science, in anything, a number is just a number unless you would give it a unit. So if we're talking about meters, you're either going to write out the word meter or you'll represent meter with the lowercase m. So let's look at how we use this to measure length. So if we look here, there's an image of a uh, standard metric ruler. So how many millimeters would you think would be in one centimeter? So this is a centimeter ruler. So we would start here at the zero, and each one of these little lines represents a centimeter. So if we count over from the zero to the one, we're gonna count that there are 10 lines. So therefore one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters. So let's look at this one here. So I have a ruler and there's a length of a line. 
So based on this ruler, what is the length of the line in centimeters? Remember, when we look at this, this here is telling me that it is a centimeter ruler. So we know that it's one, two, but not quite three centimeters. So how do you think we would represent that? Well, we know it's at least going to be two, but then I have to count, well, how many millimeters? So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the way I would represent that would be 2.8 centimeters. So how many millimeters would that be? Well, I know that every single one of these lines is a millimeter, so if I was to count all of these lines all the way across, then I would find that there are 28 millimeters. Now what you notice here is all that happened is that decimal point just moved over. So when we start looking at conversions and how do we make a conversion in the metric system, all we're really going to be talking about is the movement of that decimal. And that's because the metric system is measured in units of 10. So if we were to look at estimates, so what's the length of the line to the nearest centimeter? So if I wanted to say, you know, about how long is that line, what would you answer? And so remember, when we're doing a round, we always want to go towards the nearest centimeter. We don't want to include decimals in a rounded whole number. So if I look here, it's not two, it's not quite three, but it's greater than two and a half, so we're going to say that it's about three centimeters long. Familiar with the way that videos will be done in this class. So again, remember, you can pause and rewind the video as many times as you need to. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the whisk and what you should have in your notebook right now. So if you don't have any of this information, you want to go back through the video and get this information so that you have it in your notebook. So the first part of any whisk is obviously to watch the video. Um, and did you get the important vocabulary? So these vocabulary words should be included in your notebook. Did you write down the practice problems? And then finally, when you're finished with that, you need to summarize it. Tell me, what did you learn? Give me a few sentences. What did you learn by watching this video? Be sure to include some of that key vocabulary in your summary. Your summary should always be in complete sentences. This part does not necessarily need to be in complete sentences, but your summary piece always needs to be in complete sentences. And then finally, before you have me check your notebook, I want you to give me three questions. Okay? Not only do you have to give me the questions, but you have to answer them as well. So the questions that I want you to do is I want you to give me a specific question about something that you might have gotten stuck or confused about. You had to go back and look at it because you didn't get it the first time around. What's a general question you could ask about the concept that was talked about or something that was said or explained? And then finally, give me a question that you think that I'm going to ask you if I was to quiz you on this particular topic. What's a question do you think I might ask? Now don't forget, you want to make sure that you give me an answer to all of these questions as well.